in December 2018, I was suicidal. And then, I bought a boat. When I started my YouTube channel, a few people asked me what brought me to the canals, especially as I'd never really been on a canal before. Well, in truth, I'd already started filming a YouTube video as to why I was leaving life on land for a life less ordinary cruising the UK waterways. It was my intention to put this video out as about the fourth or fifth episode, but I suppose at the time I didn't really feel ready or perhaps just not brave enough to do it. So, for this episode I've used some of that early footage, early unseen footage, including my very first attempts at being solo on the tour, which is a bit of a laugh, to be honest. This, then, is my journey from being a broken man to where I am today. Probably the happiest I've ever been. And I hope this can help people suffering with despair or depression or anxiety. Beautiful, isn't it? But sadly, it's time for me to move on. Not that I wanted to necessarily, but hey ho, it's time to go. Start a new life. North Pennines has been my home for the last five years, and I've lived in the northeast for 27 years. I've loved this place, the haunting landscape the extraordinary history, the arty culture and community and the friendliness of the people. I remember walking to the pub on Christmas Day with my two boys and saying to them, well, it's taken me 56 years, but I've finally found a place I can call home. Now, this place feels sullied and I have to move away and start a new life. Something way outside my comfort zone. Something I've never tried before. That somehow it'll make sense in my search for a simpler life. Why do people move to the canals, or the cut as it's quite often called? Uh, for many of course, it's a dream. Uh, some do it for financial purposes, some because they want to live an alternative lifestyle or a more eco-friendly lifestyle. Uh, but for a lot of people, it's an escape. They want the solitude, the peace, the, um, to get away from the stresses of modern life. Uh, and of course they may have suffered some, some of life's traumas, like divorce or the death of a loved one. Uh, they may have lost their job, they may, lo may have lost their home. Could be all sorts of reasons. Uh, it could be a combination of all of those. Um, so, what brought me to the cut? Well, first of all, I think we need a little bit of back history. Now, I filmed this back in January 2019. Uh, and the sound quality wasn't brilliant because all you could hear was the, the waterfall but um, I have overdubbed it, the lip sync might not be quite there but um, it'll just give you an idea about what's been happening in my life. Yeah so back in 1990 it seemed that um, events seemed to conspire against me. Uh, in the space of a less than a year I lost my dad I lost my wife, I lost my business, I lost my house and I lost my car and that was an incredibly difficult thing to take um, and I fought and I fought and I fought to try and keep everything under control. I fought to to just um, keep all I had uh, and in the end I just lost everything and that led to 
18 months of quite severe mental health issues. And who would have thought, 29 years later, something similar would happen? Um, and, you know, the last few months has been incredibly difficult and um, I've been in some very, very dark places and had some horrendously destructive thoughts. Um, I'd had an extremely stressful time at work uh, and I didn't really agree with the direction that the charity that I worked for was going in. I also realised that um, work would become even more stressful after they'd made the proposed redundancies. At the same time as this, my relationship ended in extremely distressing circumstances. And I also realised that the house and the cabin that I lived in had to be sold. But back to 2019. I've been apoplectic at times. I um, um I admit that, but um, rather than fighting against it, I've tried to accept everything. I've decided to just go with it. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to leave this place, uh, but I, I want to start a simpler life somewhere else and keep life as simple as possible. One evening in late November 2018, I was lying on the sofa at home, drunkenly channel hopping, uh, and I came across a fairly interesting programme about communities. And one of the communities that was featured was the canal community. Now this piqued my interest, and the following morning, when I was a bit more sober, I googled UK canals and came up with uh, a few YouTubers. There weren't that many of us in those days. Um, so I watched a bit of Cruising Cut and Robbie Cumming um, and Sort of Interesting and Country House Gent and I thought, hey, I could do that. Uh, it just seemed like an ideal way out to me. It was, it was brilliant. It, it would have uh, given me my creative interest, that's sort of photography and filmmaking, uh, but also there's the community aspect and I would have escaped from the stresses of the modern world. So suddenly there was a feeling of hope. It was like there was a way out. I chatted to my kids about it and they were encouraging and fully supportive. I knew work were going to be making redundancies in the new year and so in February I took voluntary redundancy and by the middle of the month I'd made plans to view some boats. Having a support network friends, family, loved ones or even professionals is really important for mental health. But actually having hope, a new beginning and light at the end of the tunnel is imperative. The prospect of my new life gave me that hope. My mental health was now improving and yeah you know there were still periods of rage, of anger, um, and I was still on quite a bit of medication for the anxiety I'd been suffering. But actually, the black fog was beginning to lift. Well, it's February the 20th. Um, and I'm just about to leave Northumberland to uh, drive down to Nantwich to have a look at some boats. There's only one way to find out what they're like and that's by going to see them. So, we'll see how it goes. Well, yesterday was a really interesting day, actually. Um, I saw, saw three boats in the morning and then I went up to Salby Bridge to have a look at one of Shire Cruiser's ex-hire boats and um, it was a really, really lovely boat, actually. Um, and it's, it's possibly a bit big just for me to be on. But then, and it's also right at the top end of my budget, but then, you know, I got home and I thought about it and I thought, well, it's, it's going to be my home actually, isn't it? It's, it's going to be where I'm going to be living, so I may as well make it as comfortable as possible. So, yeah, I, I seriously think I'm going to put an offer in and, um, and yeah, we'll, we'll see where it goes from there. Yeah.
Well, so it's now the 2nd of April and I thought I'd better give you uh, an update on what's going on with the boats, really. So after a little bit of negotiation, my offer was uh, accepted, which was fantastic. Um, and I ended up si signing a sale agreement on the boat. And yesterday, I had a very exciting day. I, I took the boat out for what's called a sea trial, uh, which is basically, you know, taking it for a bit of a uh, test drive down, down the canal which was absolutely brilliant. I've got to admit, you know, it was my first experience of piloting uh, a narrowboat, if that's what you do with a narrowboat. Just what a fabulous experience. It was it was brilliant. I loved it. The other thing is that, you know, I've spent I've spent 40 years of my life acquiring all these things and it suddenly occurred to me that I've got to get rid of everything, which is quite a daunting task to be honest um, but uh, yeah I'm just so so looking forward to getting on board well, you have no idea how stressed I must be and I really don't handle stress particularly well at all um, it's now the 19th of April uh, and I'm going to be completing on Tuesday, which is the 23rd, um, and I've arranged the insurance and, and most things are sorted. My beautiful home is no longer a, a home, it is just now a house um, with the bare essentials left in it. It's been, it's been so difficult getting rid of a lot of the things, um, especially things like my, my photography portfolio, which is obviously quite important to me. Uh, years and years of, of taking photographs and I don't need them anymore. It's not like I'm going to be approaching advertising agencies or design companies or anything like that. So I don't need them anymore. Um, and I feel that, you know, this is part and part and part of the problem with modern life isn't it is that we we collect all these things we acquire all these things we consume all these things but really do we really need them I don't need those things anymore and yeah the the logistics of getting the the stove installed and the washing machine installed I mean that's something that's really been stressing me out so but I think what I really need to do, I'm, I'm just so looking forward to getting on the boat now and just leaving all the stress behind and I think I really just need to be on the boat and live on the boat for a month or two and then take it from there. The canals, the exercise and the lifestyle were quickly beneficial. Within four months I'd lost a stone and a half in weight my blood pressure was lower than it had been for years. I was fitter physically and mentally, and I'd come off the anxiety medication. I must add though, that the canals aren't always a place of healing as they have been for me. It can, at times, be a lonely place for the solo boater. Sometimes you come across reclusives, more often than not in unloved boats who rarely move. Maybe they have become so embroiled in bitterness and anger that there's no way back. I'm not being judgmental, perhaps their circumstances allow for little else. Or maybe they're still slowly working through their turmoil and hopefully healing. The K&A have outreach workers provided by a local charity to assist people in this position. A very good idea, I think. On May the 1st, I moved on board. Wow, just absolutely amazing. How exciting. It was just, just beyond my wildest dreams. It was nothing like living in a house, absolutely nothing. It was a huge learning curve. 
my anxiety levels was through the roof. Right, well I've been on board about three days now. I've just been uh, unpacking. I, I haven't actually gone anywhere yet, uh, I must admit. Um, but yeah, so I've just been trying to get the boat in order and, and, and been getting used to it. Um, and just, wow, it's just, um, it's, it's a completely different way of life, I have to say that, but it's great and I'm really, really loving it. Um, and I'm hoping that later on this afternoon, uh, I may actually, start on my way down the canals uh, which will be another bizarre experience uh, really looking forward to to getting out there out there on the canals i was helped out of the marina by a member of staff because i really didn't feel confident enough to do it myself having dropped the guy off this was my very first experience of helming a boat solo. Nope, I had really no idea what I was doing. Well, I'm off. I can't believe it. This is just, wow. This is amazing, it's fantastic. It's like, it's like all the turmoil and, whoops, just coming under a bridge. I better watch what I'm up to. It's like all the turmoil and the upheaval I've suffered in the last eight months has just evaporated. But I learned, and I learned fast. I'd given myself a new challenge, and I stepped up to the plate. I began to relax and enjoy myself. I was immersed in nature, which was so therapeutic. I was constantly faced with new challenges. Locks, lift bridges, tunnels, and all of these fed my anxiety. As I overcame each challenge, my self-confidence began to grow. A couple of years ago, when I was with Cathy, she uh, asked me the question, have I ever considered the fact that I have ADHD? And I must admit, I gave it very little thought at the time, but a few months later, when I was locked down in Stourport, I did start to give it some thought. And when I realised that, I, yes, I did have ADHD, it was an absolute revelation. It, it answered so many questions about me, about who I am, and why I am like I am. Um, everything from my school reports, which always said uh, could do better, needs to concentrate more, to the fact that sometimes I make slightly unfiltered comments, um, which some people can find a bit offensive. Um, and why is this relevant? Well, it's relevant because People who are on the spectrum tend to have, um, tend to feel things more deeply than others. And that intensity of feeling has actually caused me to suffer quite bad depressions over the years. Uh, so much so that I've been at the point of suicide three times and I've actually tried to kill myself once. The point I'm making is that, you know, no matter how desperate you feel, there is always light at the end of the tunnel. I am so, so pleased that I didn't actually succeed in uh, killing myself because I wouldn't be leading this absolutely amazing life that I'm leading now. In 
2021, I came across someone posting on Instagram about positive affirmations. These are simple, positive, daily statements we can make to challenge any negative thoughts that we may have about ourselves. It's about believing in yourself, accepting yourself for who you are and what you look like, and learning to love yourself. Something that I told myself was that I was enough, that I was strong and resilient and lovable. And when I actually believed that I was enough, I found that I no longer needed alcohol. I'd been a heavy drinker since the age of 16, which again is a sort of symptom of being on the spectrum. Uh, people on the spectrum tend to abuse drugs and alcohol to some extent. Now, you know, I used to drink, I used to use it as a prop if you like. Uh, I thought people found me amusing when I was uh, having a drink. People thought I was funny when I'd had a drink. I was more likeable when I'd had a drink. And then I quit drinking, which of course made me less anxious and less liable to fits of depression. I occasionally left comments on the posts about positive affirmations and uh, we actually ended up messaging one another. After a while, we met. This was when I met the lovely Val. I have to say, I'm full of gratitude for the life I am now living. I'm not motivated by greed or profit or ambition. I'm not caught in the pace and stress of modern life. I'm not bound by the desire for more. I live a simple life, close to nature, and I leave a small footprint on this beautiful planet of ours. I've found my soulmate. I'm living my best life. I have never been happier. So if you have a friend or a family member who's suffering with mental health issues, please try and encourage them to open up. Men in particular are rubbish at opening up. And guys, if you're watching this and you need a bit of help, please talk to someone anyone. Now I'm not for one minute suggesting that the path I've chosen might be the right one for you. We can't all go off and buy a narrowboat after all. But there are plenty of other options. Um, choose something that would be more to your suiting. Maybe living in a caravan or a camper van, travelling the world, um, volunteering with a, with a group with a, a shared interest. Give yourself a challenge, but most of all, give yourself some hope. Clouds battle with the sunlight As rain begins to fall Those living on the water Shelter